So today we're gonna to talk to y'all about why we left the United States of America and we're never ever going back. So stay tuned. They just sing as giving them a the high of family. And I What's going on world? Welcome back to T3 and me. It's your man Tim Ford Jr. here. And I have my beautiful wife, Miss Siobhan Ford. Salama family. And I have the man of the show, Mr. T3. T3. Say hi to the people. Hi. Say how y'all doing? Welcome to my channel. I'm playing with elephant. You playing with elephant? Wow. Nice. Yeah. And of course, of course, the new baby of the house. My beautiful daughter, Miss Naya. Say hey, Naya. Yeah, good job, girl. Good job. Well, yeah, welcome back to the channel, y'all. If you're new, welcome. Karibu and Swahili. We thank you all for tuning in. We thank you all for subscribing. And if, like I said, if you're new to the journey, welcome. We appreciate all the love. We appreciate all the support. We appreciate all the prayers and all the well wishes that have been sent our way. You know, we don't take it for granted. And we're grateful that, you know, we're producing content that's able to keep your attention. Cause I know in these days, it's tough to, you know, it's tough for people to have long form content that holds people's attention, but we're grateful that God puts up, put us in the position to be able to produce things that's bringing out people's value. So, you know, welcome y'all, welcome. But yes, like I said in the beginning, today we're gonna talk about why we're never, ever, 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 ever going back to the United States of America. That's probably one of our most frequently asked questions from people. Like, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people always ask, um, you know, are y'all y'all really never going back? Y'all really going to do that? Y'all not going to visit y'all family? Y'all not going to come back for the wedding or funeral? Like, nah. Nah, we've already Love missed. Love y'all, but nah. Yeah. We missed, what, two yeah. funerals, two it's weddings? Possible. Not with the, the message we, messages we've been putting out. Man, if we go back to the U.S., we'll be a target. But that's not why we're not going back, but... Yeah, you just have to be wise. You have to be wise. You know, it's a lot of different reasons that we're going to give you all why we, you know, decided not to ever go back. But, you know, it's just, it's time for it. It's really time, and it's time for us to stop being afraid of trying something new, afraid of stepping out of our comfort zone, because on the other side of your comfort zone is the real you. It's the real you. So, you know, we like to encourage people to step outside of that so you can become your best self. Yeah, and I guess since we talked about the, that part, like the freedom of speech, that's one of the reasons why we're not going back. Because, you know, if you have this sort of radical message, this sort of black empowerment message, this sort of black first, do for yourself, and pull your people up, you are a target. Yep. They have assassinated... There's a um, program called COINTELPRO that the CIA actually put into place where they actually wanted to target all black male figures who they considered that could be messiahs. So people like Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King, these people were systematically um, infiltrated yeah. and then targeted to be killed because of the message they were preaching of black empowerment, of going back to our roots, going back to Africa. All of the people, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Right before they died, they started talking about Africa. They started talking about reparations. That's when they were killed. And so we know that our message is way too radical for America. We got to stay here where we stay. I'm over here. Where, we're among our people, where we blend in, where nobody knows where we are. Ain't no addresses here. They can't find us. So that's one of the things why we're not going back. Freedom of speech. Truly free. Because America claims they have freedom of speech. But that's not true. Because if you talk, start talking crazy, something's going to happen to you. Look at yeah. Alex Jones. Because he said Sandy Hook massacre was um, was fake, they went ahead and fined him almost like forty six million dollars just for saying that. But I thought we had freedom of speech. Forty six million. 
Wow, that's a lot of money. I didn't know it was that much. But yeah, y'all, over there, there's not really much freedom of speech. And, um, you know, especially like my wife said, when you start having these kind of talks about empowering yourself and empowering yourself to overcome the mental shackles and where they put us, like it's important that uh, we realize that that place is not the best fit for us. So, um, yeah, one of the um, first reasons that we decided with well, the most important and first reason that we decided not to ever. My three year old almost tried to trip me out. You know how it go. But yeah, the first reason we decided not to ever go back was because we had a calling. Like the most high called and led us and put it in our heart and our spirit to get away. Be a dream that I had. I actually had a dream back in um, 2020, I believe, right after the pandemic kicked off in March of 2020. A few months later, I think, I believe it was July, June or July, I had a series of dreams where most I actually spoke to me, like I heard the audible, this is the first time I'm hearing the audible voice of the most I usually um, get dreams and visions from him, but I actually heard him say, go and pave the way. And he said to go to Africa. And so that's what we did. Like, you can't, you can't disobey the most high. Like you get swallowed up by a whale. <laughs> Right. But yeah, like if um if you don't follow God, you could possibly get swallowed up by a whale. But you won't die. But the, the whale will spit you out, like she said. But if you get end up in the belly of the beast inside of a whale, it's not where you want to be. I told an older elder gentleman that I was, you know, growing with and learning spiritually with, and he told me he was like, man, if you don't listen, you might go crazy over here. Like God doesn't put certain things in everybody. Like if he puts something like that inside of you all to make that move and to do that, you have to do it or you may go crazy over here because you're going against what he's telling you to do. So, you know, if you're having that, go ahead and take advantage of that call that you're getting. But that's what we had to do. People were wondering, how did you all, how did you all make it look so effortless? It wasn't effortless. I'm gonna tell you that. And we tell y'all that in our videos. Like, it's hard work. It's hard. It's hard being a pioneer. Africa is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things here from the West, like from America, from the UK, that we are familiar with that is simply not here in Africa yet. Yeah. And that's actually why we came. That's another point that we'll touch on. Is um, we came to, to really um, help with the building of Africa. We really came to help with infrastructure in Africa. We really came to come back to our um, our homeland and rebuild it because we see that uh, after all the years and the centuries of colonialization, of, of war, strategic wars, of uh, countries in the West supplying arms and weapons to different groups in Africa to keep it divided and to keep blood spilling and, and war going on. And um, many of the, the colonial countries, when they were kicked out of countries, they actually destroyed a lot of the infrastructure. They went and poisoned the water. They went and destroyed roads and different things that they were built because they're they're evil like that. Like if, you, if we can't stay here, you guys can't have this stuff that stuff either. Yeah. And so they destroyed much of Africa. And so um, they really left it in what they like to call a third world state. Mm -hmm. So there's um, even though it's very beautiful here, like the landscape is beautiful, the people are beautiful, the culture is beautiful. The infrastructure needs a lot of work. And so there's in um, some countries. Yeah, we were locked out of wealth in America because when they were building wealth, when they were building the roads and the, the, um, the railways and when they were um, giving out land and all that stuff, we were locked out because we were slaves or we were convict leases, um, convict leasing program or we were um, subject to Jim Crow. We had laws put in place where we were locked out of society. But here in Africa, we're not locked out of society. We're here um, and we can build. We can help build Africa and we can help tap into the wealth that we are owed as the children of Africa. This is our inheritance. Yep. And this is another point which segues way right into our next point. Mm -hmm. This is not our land. I mean, that is not our land. I'm sorry. Yes where we were, you know, enslaved at, where they brought us to. That's not our land. Mm -mm. We don't belong over there. So, you know, it's we're a- not Aboriginal Indian. Yeah. No. Yeah. Maybe some of our people went over there, but that's not our original land. So it's important that you reconnect to where you're from in order to get to that next level of where you need to go in life. I believe, like in order to properly heal, you won't be able to heal in that society. Like that society won't allow us to get to that that true spiritual healing that we're looking for, that level of understanding that that top high 
consciousness level that we're looking for it's there it's very difficult to achieve because you're still in the vicinity of the people who are trying to take advantage of you you're still in a system where people are trying to steal your resources people are trying to steal your energy that is where you are all right within that system so for us it was better for us not to keep um you know stay within that system and stay within that land if we know it's not for us that doesn't make sense yeah so just to kind of Piggyback off of, I don't know if you can eat those flowers. He was smelling it. Oh, okay. Um, you know, we were us being enslaved was the result of a curse. You know, um, if you go to Deuteronomy 28, it talks about the curses that will overtake us as a people, as Hebrews. And so, because we disobeyed our, our God, we were scattered systematically to the four corners of the earth: America, the islands. Um, the UK, Netherlands. And it's on paper, y'all. Everywhere. We were scattered. Yeah. And so, because we know we were victims of the transatlantic slave trade, we understand that America's not our homeland. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there's lots of different schools of thoughts popping up where people are saying that we're the Indians. And although some of us do have Indian in our blood because we were raped and because we intermarried with them, Indians also owe slaves. About to say, Let's yeah. Not yeah. That. A lot of the American Indians who people say that they, you know, that's, that, that's our true lineage. A lot of them were actually slave owners. They uh, were in cahoots with the white people. I guess they said, if you can't beat them, join them. And they actually owned slaves. So um, we have to really like understand our history and understand that we are indigenous to Africa. And although we were, we've been far removed from our roots and um, everything is time that we reconnect. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. It's time. Bless you, son. For the sake of of our lineages and for our future generations, there's no wealth to be gotten for black people in America. Yeah. Most black Americans don't even have $1,000 in their bank account. In the next 10 to 20 years, black people will have zero wealth. Yeah. And let's not forget that income does not equate to wealth. Wealth, true wealth is owning assets, uh, owning manufacturing plants, owning industries, being the producer and not the Something. consumer. Yeah, exactly. And within that system, we are, we are locked within the consumer realm some of our people make it outside of the consumer realm realm into the producer realm but it's still within the system of you know um which leads to our next point the system of police brutality the system of police brutality and systematic race systematic racism white supremacy all of those are in one bucket all of those are in one bucket and they're all together and they all work together simultaneously so, you know, that brutality and all of those different systematic things, that's not over here. White people didn't come over here and put a system in place to stop us from elevating within the country. And they may have put the immigration laws and stuff in place, but that's coming down as we continue to work. But they aren't over here in every nick and cranny bothering us, trying to stop us from elevating, making sure you get, oh, do you have, um, do you have your license to cut hair? Like, bro, I found out that they made us start getting licenses just so they can tax us on cutting hair. License to cut hair, license to do carpentry, license to do welding, license to do trades. Like, why do why do we need licenses to be able to do something that God gave us a gift to do? Like, think about that for a second. They just want to control everything. Like, you need to be in their system to give them some of your money from what you're doing. You have to. And it's not like that over here. It's not the police brutality. That's like when we get pulled over by the police, it's really a man. It's a um it's a what's the word I'm looking for? It's a it's really a fun conversation. I can honestly admit I don't feel for my life when I have a conversation with police officers over here. And oh, then <laughs> you like it's that. not fun for her, but you know, I don't it, it's not it's definitely not what we used to feel in the States. At least for me. Like I, I used to get like very bad anxiety when I would even, if I was on the interstate and I would see the police on the other side of the median with the whole wall in the middle, I would still get some anxiety if I see them drive past just because of what we've been enduring over there and what we had to go through. So that's not something that we feel over here. Like the police brutality, that's, that's gone y'all. So if you know, if that's the reason why you're thinking about coming over here, hey, I know I get that question so much. They're like, how the police bro? People always ask me that, so hey, it's wide open, y'all. The police are much more personable. I would, although I say no one likes to be pulled over by the police anywhere you go. It's not, for me, it's not a fun getting pulled over by the police in any country, but that element of terror, that er element of violence, that element of pure evil is not here. Yeah. The most that may happen to you is you have to get them. 
couple of t-shirts, a couple of dollars, and they be, you'll be on your way. Yeah, that's why it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we, ba we basically have black privilege here because in America, white people can do that. I actually saw somebody pull out a white privilege card and hand it to the police and got away. Like, literally, they make white privilege cards. And so, I've seen people, white people wow. give police money. I've seen white people give police drugs, and they've been sent on their way. So, wow. See? Yeah. It's crazy. Our next point, safety. I let my wife touch on the safety one. You know, women love to speak on their safety. Yeah, you know, another reason why we left uh, America for Africa and why we're never going back is the safety issue. Uh, in America, as as mothers, we feel very reluctant and very um, apprehensive and oftentimes scared to allow our children to simply go outside and play and be yeah. children because, hold on, I'm about to vote a vote a That's the boy. Yeah, because you have um, nefarious individuals um, who have subscribed to the European construct of pedophilia, which is absent in Africa. I'm not going to say nobody in Africa ever never touched a child because, of course, that's impossible. But overall, the culture here is much more safe. Um, you can allow your children to play freely. That concept of a Texas village to raise a child is really evident here. Yeah. Like, you can be walking with your child or you can stop at the store. Somebody will come and pick up your child. Won't even know you. Will come pick up your child, go and grab them some juice. Man. Or um, just play Get with them. them. Candy. Say, hey, Toto, hey, baby. Like, they're just very loving here. And you really see that concept of a village where that aspect of the village mentality is really missing in America. Um, Many women, after they give birth, they have to pay for doulas. Doulas are birth workers who will help you. You know, after you get birth, they'll help you. Like if you need to go to sleep or if you, um, you need, need help changing your baby or cleaning up your house or making food, they'll come and you have to pay them sometimes a lot of money to come and provide you that help. In, Amer in Africa, doulas are already built into the society. So you have your grandmother that's coming, your great-grandmother, if she's still alive, your great-auntie, your friends from from preschool like Man. everybody's coming around you you literally don't even have to lift a finger for like a few months after you have that baby you don't have to worry about paying them or anything um so yeah it, it's, it's a very safe culture y'all see us out here walking yeah. nobody's bothering us people are driving by nobody's harassing us um yeah. there's no guns there's no guns allowed here in tanzania where we are so they don't have to worry about gun violence so if you know how to fight you can pretty much just defend yourself normally like how we used to do back in the day if there was a problem you would either talk it out that's how they do it here they talk things out Man. they have chiefs here who um preside over villages so if there's dispute it's handled in an orderly fashion mm -hmm. you don't have to go to court and go through all this paperwork and have things dragged out and just the mess of the legal system that's in, Af in America is not here. Yeah. It's much more safe now. Do you have the occasional breaking? Of course, theft is everywhere. But I would say that would be like the most thing you have to worry about is theft. You want, you don't have to worry about murder, yeah. pedophilia, um, kidnapping, all the nefarious, nefarious things that we deal with in America. Yeah. It's largely absent here yeah. in Africa. Yeah. And I, I'll touch on it briefly. Coming from a father's perspective, with a you know so-called black son. Um, it's very, it's very calming over here for me to let my son go out and play, and know that he'll be okay and in a good, you know, in a good place and in a good position. So it's it's, it's easy, you know, it's easier, a lot easier over here for me to be able to uh, let him go out and let him play with people because I know that the society here will welcome him. Like he's made friends in every neighborhood that we've been in easily because his personality is like out of this world already. So we could have, if we would have stayed over there, they would have, man, at some point their personality would have had to go somewhere because they, you know, they're loving. T3. Okay. Yeah, at some point their personality would have to go somewhere because, uh, you know, that society makes us, it forces us to not, let our children be free we have to we have to shelter them in order to protect them so for him to be able to freely be a child he can freely come into who he's supposed to be we don't have to make him tuck his black in we don't have to make him act a certain way in certain places in order to appease other people that won't feel afraid of him like that that's important that we don't have to enforce that on our children
The next reason we're never going back is because of the currency and the cost of living over here. Like the US dollar goes a lot further here than it would in America. Like um, over in the US, we would be considered, you know, poor. poor. We were poor. <laughs> we were poor in America. Right, well, until right before we started our company. Yeah, right, right until like the we last poor. year before we left, last few years before we left, we were getting in a better position. Oh. We had learned how to, you know, make our business grow. We were in the process of growing our business, but for the most part, it's not, it's difficult to generate and accumulate wealth over there because they have you locked out of it. They have us locked out of it over there. Like my wife was mentioning in the beginning of the video, there's um, certain systems in place that kept us away from obtaining the wealth when they were putting like the railroad system in place, all of the real estate, all of the fruits, the cotton, all of that, when they were putting that in place, we were enslaved, so we wasn't able to tap into that. So, you know, yeah. now, if you have a little bit of something over there, if you had an opportunity to come up with a little bit, like it'll be, it'll go a long way over here. So let's tell you guys the currency exchange rate in Tanzania. One US dollar is equal to roughly about 2,300 Tanzanian shillings. And of course it fluctuates daily depending on the market, but it's, it's around that average. So let's put that into a real term. So for example, we can eat breakfast for- Two, three one dollar here our whole family we can eat breakfast for one dollar we can get chapatis chapatis are basically like baked bread like baked flat breads they have here um you can get those for 500 t shillings so remember the u.s dollar is worth almost two almost 2500 t shillings so we get four chapatis that's 2000 t shillings and then we get a big water that's our breakfast now if we want to get fancy we want to add eggs or peanut butter or something to it that may cost a little bit more. That may be another dollar or two. So our whole family can eat breakfast for one dollar here. One dollar. So that just shows you how far our money goes. I rent at our old house. Check out our video um, about um, our house tour in Tanzania. We had a huge mansion, seven bedroom mansion for 350 US dollars, which was equal to almost one million Tanzanian shillings. So in Tanzania and Africa, we are millionaires here. Mm -hmm. And it's not to, to flaunt and be like, oh, we're millionaires. No, it's to get, it's to, to co combine and collaborate and unite with our brothers and sisters here so that we can build together. They have the knowledge of the land, the culture, and we have the knowledge of the West, like the knowledge of the universities and the knowledges of, of technology. And so we, if we combine, we are unstoppable. We're so powerful together. Yep. And that's the key is the unity between Afri continental Africans and African-Americans and the diaspora in Africa. Yeah, that's the key. And that's what we're here to do, help each other with that, man. So if you're thinking about doing it, come on over here and put your, your expertise into place over here because all of that knowledge is needed in somewhere that people would appreciate it. Yeah. People would appreciate it. You'll so yeah. doing something meaningful for, for yourself, for your lineage, for society. Um, they, man, you know, and some people say like, oh, well, Africans don't like African Americans. That's a myth. Watch out, T3. Of course, they have the one or two Africans who are like, ah, you know take or leave them but for the most part like the people here have been so welcoming to us yeah. when they find out we're from america like they they look up to us they really think we're cool like oh my gosh like so american sometimes we even run across africans who've never even met an african american yeah. sometimes they think we're white they ask us like you guys are yeah and we have to educate them like no we're not white people like yeah we yeah. grew up in the european culture but we're african yeah. We were just displaced. Yeah. A lot of people don't even know that we were um, stolen and taken over there. Some people think we took a boat ride to go work in America. So we really have to give people the knowledge of like what we've been through and where we came from. But yeah, that goes back to our next point. It's still a strong biblical culture over here. Very strong. Very strong. Like you can't get away with a lot of the demonic mess. It's a modest society. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, of course, there's some things that go on that people don't agree with. It's negative. There's always negative around when positive is around, but there's a much stronger force of biblical principles over here where you can freely put your children into this society, where you can freely acclimate to this society. Like with the television and stuff, it's not the, the constant bombardment of sexual images. It's not the constant bombardment of negativity. It's not the constant bombardment of, you know, them trying to force us to think a certain way in order to act. Yeah, all of it. That's not even allowed in most countries here. That's a, that's against the law. Like they have a law against 
Sex at nine months old, my young age. I'm innocent. Yeah. I can stay innocent. Yeah. Yes. Like she said, we want to see all that. We want to put our people and our family in a better position where we don't have to ingest that type of food. Since we're here, got to show y'all some of the products real quick. This natural body. Not natural body. Yeah. Natural product. Natural body. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, come closer. Come. Busy beach. So our last point on why we are never going back to the US is the topic of food. So um as we know, like most of the food in America is GMO, genetically modified, not organic. It's been grown in the lab. Now they even have lab grown meat. I don't know what they make it out of, but it's not it's some some substances that they've created synthetically. Um, and so a lot of the culture is anti-life there because if you continue to eat foods that are genetically grown that are not, that are seedless, I don't understand how that works. How can you have a vegetable or a fruit that doesn't have any seeds in it? So where did it come from? If, there, if it doesn't come from a seed, it doesn't have seeds in it, then where did it come from? That means that it's been genetically engineered that's not something that you should be introducing into your body or something that you should be giving to your children so um most of the um most of the uh food here is organic organically grown uh, most people have gardens in their backyards um a lot of the superfoods that we love and we know from america a lot of us used to follow dr sebi he used to always talk about superfoods like seaweed sea moss um elderberry um, all of the different foods, turmeric, clove, all of that stuff just grows freely in the wild. Um, mango trees, sugar cane, um, all of the foods that we need to survive and to thrive are here growing organically. Um, and you can grow organically here as well. You can also purchase land for very cheap. Like you can get land, you can get an acre of land from anywhere from like $200 and up. $200, $300, $400, $500 for a whole acre of land and you can grow food organically. Um, the soil is beautiful. They have beautiful, rich soil here that's not um, been depleted of its nutrients from monocropping. In America, they use a system called monocropping where they basically plant one crop in the whole entire field. And what that does to the soil is it depletes the soil of the nutrients because that plant is pulling out a particular nutrient and it's not being replaced because there aren't any other crops around that are replacing the nutrients that are being pulled out by that one crop. And so you have, um, so you have soil erosion and soil depletion happening at a rapid rate in America. And in addition to all the pesticides that are being used, that are being sprayed on the food that are causing all sorts of cancers and different chronic diseases. And so I'm an herbalist. And so that's something that's very important to me is um, giving my family and myself nutritious foods, nutritious herbs, and knowing that the soil that I'm using in the air has been being sprayed with chemtrails and all sorts of foolishness. When I know that, um, to me, that's very important because one thing is if you don't have health, you don't really have anything because you can't live to your full potential if you are in ill health, if you're crippled, if you're um, suffering from some sort of debilitating disease, if you have to always watch your insulin, you can't really live life to your fullest potential. And um, you can't really be the best you if you're suffering from so these sorts of conditions. So um, that was another reason why um, most of the food here is just simple whole foods. 
the staples of the culture are maize, which is non-GMO corn, um, ugali, which is the flowers, the grain flowers that we grew up on for centuries, um, honey, milk, uh, grass-fed beets, and fish, fresh fish from the ocean. The, the Tanzania is surrounded by the Indian Ocean, so you have a bunch of fresh fish. You have all of the spices. We know that spices were um, were at one point considered wealth. Uh, don't forget about the spice trade that they had where they would trade spices all over the world. That's how valuable it was. Um, so yeah, everything is just simple and organic here, which is beautiful. So yeah, that is most of our reasons. I'm sure we have more, but those are like our biggest reasons of why we will never go back to the United States of America and why we're living in Africa and we're loving it here. And we encourage you guys, if y'all considering making a move to Africa, the most I put it in your spirits to come to Africa, come to Africa, y'all. It's beautiful here. Yes, there's challenges. Yes, there are things we have to work through with immigration. Everything is not a walk in the park. But I would say overall, it's a much, 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 much better experience being in Africa than it is in America. I would never go back. That's not no cap. That's not for no views on YouTube or none of that. So yeah, if y'all have um, been following us so far, you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button. Please hit the share button. And we love you guys, and we'll see y'all in the next video. Shalom. Repat Book is Africa's first social media platform steered towards repatriates, also known as returnees to the motherland in every country of Africa as well as diasporans in America, Canada, the UK, and all four corners of the earth who are considering making the journey to freedom. It is a space where we can chat, earn money simply by being active on the site, and all of the features we are already familiar with from Facebook and WhatsApp without having to sell our information and minus the censorship. For all continental Africans, repats in Africa, and persons who wish to come to Africa, this is our place to build, learn, network, problem solve, unite, innovate, and educate ourselves for a smooth transition into our rightful positions as we break away from our captors. This is the place we all knew we needed. By consolidating our energy, we can force transformation. This is the drum. If you're interested in joining the community, click the link in the description. Karibu. Thank you.